Hey, good morning, friends. Pastor Jason with our Tuesday check-in. I want to take us back to Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Because I, I came to a bit of a realization as we worked through this, and kind of last week leading up to the sermon as Pastor and Angie preached on it on Sunday, and then as I, I got to kind of work through it with the youth group on Sunday night some, well, that Jeff was off. Um, it, it occurs to me that I don't think I fully grasped everything that was going on in Saul's conversion until maybe, till maybe, maybe now, and maybe I don't even have it now, but I think I'm closer. Um, I, I think so often when I've read this or even when I've preached on it or taught on it, because I've done that before, just because I love this story. I like to identify myself with that Saul to Paul conversion but you know, it's rare that that happens I think more often what that we're going to be presented with are with some of the opportunities shared by the other characters by the other people in this section of scripture and there's and there's so many there that I don't think we ever consider you know we talk about Saul and Paul we'll talk about Anne and Ananias a little bit we'll, we'll talk about Jesus as we should that could Christ hand picking the the worst possible person he could to be his voice to the Gentiles to spread his message and this amazing transformation that happens that turns Saul the persecutor into Paul an apostle of Christ is it's huge that that is the takeaway friends but <clears throat> But I, I, I don't think that many of us are meant for that kind of conversion experience. What a lot of us are probably meant for are what some of the other folks in this piece of scripture go through. Consider for a moment just just this. As Paul as as Saul is on his way to Damascus, he's not traveling alone. He has some traveling companions with him. He's struck down by Jesus. He's called out by Jesus, and he's left there in a heap blind. The other men don't see anything. It says that they hear something, but had to be an amazing, frightening experience. And Saul's companions don't bail on him. They don't just leave him there for dead. They pick him up, they dust him off, they take him by the hand, and they lead him into Damascus. They stay right there by the side of their friend, by their leader, by, by their companion, you know, whatever their relationship was. They, they don't just leave him there confused, bewildered, dumbfounded. But they pick him up and they lead him on to, to the next step in his journey towards the next stage of his destination. And I think often we're going to be given that same opportunity ourselves. Friends, someone in our life will be confronted with something that leaves them, that leaves them reeling. You may not be able to help them all the way through it or decipher the cause, but, but we can take them by the hand and just continue to lead them forward. There's, there's a lot of potential there in that. He's only mentioned one time in scripture, but it says that, you know, Paul winds up in the house of a man named Judas there on Straight Street. We don't know who Judas is. We don't know if he's one who kind of leans a little bit towards the Pharisee side in this, there were, there, where they want to persecute and round up the members of the way, the followers of Christ. That doesn't seem all that likely, though, because Ananias makes his way right into that house. <clears throat> but either way, we don't, we don't know who Judas is, but his willingness to open his home to let Saul and his companions in, to then let Anna and Ananias in. His his hospitality to just make his space available for some transformation to, to happen, to give Saul room to, to fast and to pray, just to try to kind of work through some of what he's coming to realize. Judas plays a big role in this just by providing the space where it happens. And maybe that's a role that you or I will get to play at some point in our lives. By, by opening our home, our office, by creating a safe space in our workplace where the people know that they can come and talk with us and share with us and wrestle with things just there in our space. That's, that's huge. 
friends, and I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever thought about the role that Judas played in, in the story. I also don't think I've ever given the right amount of credit to Ananias, and I don't know, and I think we often just glaze over this a whole lot. We're focused on Saul to Paul, and that's fine. More of us will have an opportunity to be an Ananias in our life than we will be a Paul. Anna, Ananias is told by God to go to a man he's afraid of, a man who's different than him, a man who could physically hurt him, and go lay his hands on him and pray for him. To go be an instrument of peace, go be an instrument of love, go be an instrument of the Holy Spirit to this man who, if he regains his sight, might kill you in that moment. That might be a bit extreme for what that a lot of us will get to do, but I think it's a very good, good assumption, friends, that at some point in our life, we're going to feel this nudge. We're going to feel kind of this voice in the back of, of our head that says, hey, go talk to this guy or go sit next to this guy or go say this to this person, even though that you don't know them. And our level of obedience to those promptings from God to speak into other people's lives, especially when we don't know them, or even if we do and we don't like them all that much, our willingness to be obedient can lead to major transformations in our lives and in theirs. Not to, not to try to bring this to too much of a fine point, but I think it can be argued that Ananias is the hero of this, of this story. His willingness to do what Jesus tells him to do in spite of his own fears, his perceptions of Paul, I mean, that, that continues keeping the ball rolling. That lets these events continue to unfold. The role that Saul's traveling companions play, the role that Judas plays, and then the role that Ananias plays, all of those have to happen in the kind of in the order that they do to get Saul up, up to Paul, right where he is, where that God can do what he plans to do. So just, just because maybe we're not Saul in the story, we still have a key role, friends. So I think it, you know, I, I think it warrants a lot of attention this week. Acts 9, 1 through, through, through 20. Try Read it each day. Read it each week this month. Whatever you, get in there. See who you are. See what role that you're that, that maybe you're filling right now, that maybe you filled in the past. See if there's been a Judas or a traveling companion in your life before who helped get you to your next stage. Shoot them a text, give them a phone call, and say thank you. That that conversion, that transformation won't happen in a vacuum and it won't happen without a role that a lot of other people will play. I know, I know in my case, lots of people have played a big role in me getting from where I was to where I am now. And people who I have not even met yet will probably help to take me the next leg of my journey. But we see from this story, we see from Acts 9 here, that everyone has their part to play. And everyone, everyone needs to be willing to listen to the call of Christ to help everyone else along their journey as well. Friends, this, this video wound up going much longer than I thought, but again, a, a portion of scripture that I've preached on on a couple of occasions that I've written about that I, you know, that I self-identify with, I'm reading it in a whole new light now. And I encourage, I encourage you to maybe try and do the same today and this week. Thanks for your time today. Friends, hey, make sure that you're getting out to schools as you are able to get your little check checklist out. You know, pray up the staff, pray up the students, all of those folks who are involved. I know they are very appreciative of that. And if you hit that with the little hashtag M H U M C pray so that we know that you are do it doing it, we can be share sharing that stuff as well. Thanks for your time today, friends. Be safe, be well, remember how much that you are loved. Thanks.